in the parlour. Look, I've promised you lodgings, haven't I? When? Soon. Get your things and come on. Proper lodgings. You won't get a lot for those flowers, I'll bet. Come on. How much do you reckon, then? Uh-oh. Sorry, Your Highness. Little beggar, give me the slip. I'll track you down, Rat Catcher! <laughs> Jemmy? Jemmy? Job. He's got a new dog. Eleven rats in three minutes. Eleven rats? Yeah, so don't let blind George fiddle you. 
Thanks. It's called gaming, not watching, gentlemen. See to that. We've got to do something. Get me some more rats. <laughs> Unfortunately, I don't need no rats today. Is that so? I'll call back tomorrow. Hold on, hold on. What are your manners? Didn't say I wouldn't look at them, did I? <laughs> oh, oh, sickly, peaked the lot. Ah, uh, well, they'd faint at the sight of the hound. Prime fighters. This is brewery rats. Prime fighters? <laughs> and you want to grow up to be the king of the rat catchers like your pa? Rest in peace. Rest in peace. Uh, little Annie Rose, she does look uh, hungry. No, I ain't. I'll give you tuppence for I'm calling myself a fool. You'll give me tuppence each. Huh? And nothing less. Prince himself had his eye on our rats, he did. The prince himself, is that so? What have you been eating? <laughs> You've been feeding her cauliflower. That'll do it. That'll add it a sixpence a lot. Ninepence. You're trying to put me into the poor. We're trying to stay out of it. Flowers. Come on. Where are we going? You'll see. Ballots for sale. Hear about the most horrible villain the world's ever known. Cuts up small children before they's full grown. Hold your nose, Billy, and cut water out his friend. If you meet him on the highway, your life you will defend. Hiding in the forest, they leap so cruel and bold. And your face is a brace of pistols while they rob you of your gold. Give me a shiver. Come on, Scaredy. Get out and don't come back. Go! Can you believe that, Lou? <laughs> Mrs. Chesney, man. You again. What you want? We want to see lodgings. Lodgings? I told you. I've been saving. I've got money. All right. Come on up. Go on. Rent in advance, of course. That's my policy. We ain't said we'd take it yet. Oh, Jimmy, I love it. There's a view from the window. You call that chimney a view? Can we stay? We'll take it till this runs out. No racing up and down stairs, no shouting and no games, understood? This is a respectable house. Is it true, Jemmy? Are we really going to live here? Not much of a view. Can't even see the river. It's the best view in the world. Son's getting up, so should you. Still 
smell strong enough to lift a rope. Where did you find him? In a sewer? <laughs> exactly, Molly. <laughs> What's the prince want him for? His new whipping boy. Poor lad. Leave me alone. I don't want these things. I ain't wearing these. Hold still, child. I ain't staying here, neither. Your sister don't know where I am. Water! Oh, let me go! Easy, lad. Behave yourself now. You can't keep me here. Look in his shirt, child. <clears throat> you again? Right, Catcher. What's your name? None of your business. Well, his name's Jemmy, Your Majesty. Oh, I'm clearing out. But you can't, Jemmy, from the streets. You're my new whipping boy. Not me. What's a whipping boy? When Father wants me punished, he'll have you whipped in my place. You mean they'll whip me instead of you? Of course. God. It wouldn't be proper to whip a prince, would it? Why not? Me, the future king, I've never been spanked in my life. And when you're whipped, you're to bellow good and loud, understood? I'm not staying here. Yelp and bellow, those are my rules. Furthermore, you're to bow when I enter a room. Yeah, pigs will fly first. Ah! Get off it! Oi! 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 You can't lock me up! I ain't done nothing! Let me out of here! But I ain't done nothing. Jemmy? Jemmy, is that you? No, I ain't him. Have you seen him? Smudger? No, I ain't seen him. All I know is competition in the sewers is considerable less. I can't find him anywhere. Look, you ain't my sister, and I ain't got time for tykes. You see? Time and rats waits for no man. possibly hear the peacocks from there. Good, good. Now, this is a very delicate situation. Lord Chancellor, I want no mistakes to be made. There is really no need to worry. King Philip's ambassador confounds me, Lord Chancellor. Mm. He threatens me with war, yet he brings Philip's court painter to do a portrait of the Queen Mother. He encourages compromise, yet he assumes inflexible positions. Yes, he's a very clever and a very demanding gentleman, Your Majesty, but... He's only trying to throw you off balance. I hope that is all it is. Who dares spy on the king? Show yourself! Horace, what were you doing there? I wanted to remind you of our chess game today, Father. I've been working on my opening. I'm sorry, Horace, we will not be having our chess game today. I have to continue my talks with the ambassador. But you promised. Leave us, Falkenhurst. I'll join you in a moment. Why can't you talk to the stupid ambassador some other time? Horace, you know we have had a continuing dispute with Cousin Philip about the borders between our two countries. So? If I am to resolve our differences peaceably, it must be done quickly. But you promised. Horace, you are not listening to me. You always promise, and then you're too busy. You are old enough to know that affairs of state take precedence over royal recreation. Could we play tomorrow? Ambassador, welcome. Will you walk with me in the garden? Pleasure, Your Majesty. I'm very pleased with Cousin Philip for sending you along with the Ambassador. Everyone in Brattenburg has heard of your genius. Oh, yes. And everyone has heard of the Queen Mother of Brattenburg, Your Majesty. 
I was delighted when King Philip asked me to apply my poor talent to cementing relations between our countries. Oh, well said, painter. Horace, must you do that? I'm bored. Princes are supposed to be bored. It's part of the burden we have to carry. Father cancelled our chess game. Kings are not free to do everything they wish. And tuck in your shirt. The head, your highness. Uh, oh. I never do anything I wish. Well, go and do it somewhere else. You're driving me mad. <laughs> What is the matter with that child? Let me in. I've got to see Blind George. You better learn to fight rats and bark. And that goes for the rest of our esteemed clientele. You again. Blind George. You know where Jenny is? Mm, likely out making a pauper out of some other honest entrepreneur. I can't find him anywhere. Well, he'll turn up. I'll keep me good eye out for him, huh? Thanks. <laughs> Hold on, what's that foul odor? Milady. You want some garlic? Mr. Billy. <laughs> and Mr. Cutwater. Aye. With the goods, too. Been working, I see. <laughs> How much do you give us for that? Well, it's a fair piece. Where do you think it was made, do you think? I don't know where it was made, sir. But it hatched for us in the forest lane. <laughs> and uh, the original owner? Who used to wear his head on top. It made him a mite muddled when we moved it. Punctuality is the politeness of kings, but not always of princes. <laughs> True. Are the new quarters to your liking, Your Excellency? Oh, yes, Your Majesty. I can hardly hear the peacocks now. <laughs> May I suggest we toast the Queen Mother, whose loveliness has inspired me to the highest standards in my art. Here, here. A toast to the Queen Mother. The Queen Mother! The Queen, the Queen Mother. Mother! You are all too kind. And to peace and tranquility in our two great nations. To Rittenstadt. And Brattenburg. To Rittenstadt and Brattenburg. How dare you? Where have you been? Helping the chef, father. Oh! <laughs> 
a curious embellishment for a delicate negotiation, Your Majesty. And one that does not carry the royal sanction, I assure Your Excellency, we are deeply embarrassed. Fetch the whipping! Fetch the whipping, boy! You continue to try the royal patience, Horace. This time you have thoroughly offended King Philip's ambassador. And you know I will not stand for this kind of behavior. Where are we going? Six strokes. As your majesty commands. Let this be a lesson to you. We have a kingdom to rule, and it's time you understood your place in it. Yes, Father. Here's for your pains, whipping boy. You didn't obey my rules. I ain't springing no tears for you to gloat over. You'll bull rivers if I say so. Jimmy from the street. Not by half, I won't. I'll have you thrown back in the gutters. Better there than here. I suppose you had all those fine clothes and a... I had me friends. Friends? In the sewers. More friends than you. A prince doesn't need friends. Give it up, lad. I won't stay here. They can't force me. Unfortunately, they can. I'm Pequid, the tutor to His Royal Highness, for my sins. And you're Jemmy, the new whipping boy, are you not? Not for long. Accept it, son. You'll be well fed and clothed here. Yeah? You can have an education. But you don't understand, sir. It's my sister Annie Rose. She's all alone. She'll be worried sick. Morning, Master Peckwit. I'm late again. Six strokes, do you think? This once, I'll overlook it. Now, do you have your writing book? No, and I haven't even practiced my letters, so that's 15 strokes at least. Your Highness, one day you will be king. And you can't so much as, as write your own name. What's the good of being prince if I can't get someone to write my name for me? Dismissed. But I haven't been punished. Dismissed. That's all right. I'd rather go riding with my father anyhow. Dismissed. That means you too. He can't even write his own name. And you can, I suppose. Well, not so as to be proud of. But I did learn my letters off my mum. Rest in peace. Rest in peace. You expect me to believe that? A boy from the streets who can write? She also told me not to tell no lies. Least ways not to gentlemen. Well, confound me, boy. You do know your alphabet. Let me show you 
how to put those in the proper order. Then you can write a letter. Me? Who to? That sister you spoke of. I'll see she gets it. Can I put this in so I know she can buy her victuals? Certainly. I'll get some fresh paper. Mrs Chesney? Yes? A letter for Miss Annie Rose. I'll see she gets it. Soon as she nips back home, all right? What have we here, my dearie? I'm into quite a fortune, haven't we? Little slip of a girl will never know the difference. God helps those who help themselves, I always say. Late as usual. I can't be cross with you today, Horace. Too happy. I have been immortalized. I'm looking forward to it, Grandmama. Gentlemen of the Court of Brattenburg, I reveal to you my masterwork, a portrait of the mother of your country, presented as a gift of friendship from King Philip by way of his distinguished ambassador, who is with us for this momentous occasion. And now... <laughs> A unique boy. Again, Your Excellency, please accept the apologies of this court. Fetch the whipping boy. Fetch the whipping boy. Twelve strokes. Fifteen. And let this be a lesson to you. I told you to yelp and bellow. Leave me alone. You'll yelp and bellow next time if you know what's good for you. Never, never, never. Whipping boy, I ever had. Jimmy? <sighs> Whoa, dearie. I've got a letter for you. A letter? All for me? Sealed right tight, you'll notice. It has to be from Jimmy. Nobody else knows I'm alive. Would you read it to me? Oh, I never read other folks' mail. I'll be needing your rent at the end of the week, dearie. Your pay's up or out you go. Right, George. Right, George. Give this a look for me. What is this you say? You want me to read this? Uh, writing. <laughs> no good can ever come of it. Who knows what's in here? You know, the devil himself might have sent this. Do you ever think of that? No, no, child, no. For your own good, no. Can't you read? Of course I can read. I can read the Lord's Prayer on the head of a pin, if I've a mind. I get a pension from His Majesty for not seeing, and that includes reading. Oh, please. It's from Jimmy. I know it is. Mm. Well, let's see here, buddy. Well, it says here... Why don't you use your good eye? 
because I'm saving it. Uh, he says, um, oh yeah, he ran off to the Sargos the sea, Jimmy has. We don't have any sea. Well, he took a boat down river. Jimmy can't even swim. He's feared of the water. Well, there's no need for him to be. None of the stout ship under his feet. Wouldn't I know that? <laughs> Twenty years afloat I was. He says here, uh, he'll be back one fine day with a fortune. In the meantime, you are to uh, get your sleep and eat your vegetables. Send you his best. You can't read. <laughs> Sharper than a serpent's tooth is an ungrateful urchin. Away from me, you little gutter snipe, or I have the guards on you. I would you please? Oh, sir, I have your handkerchief. Thief! 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 Here now, I was fixing to hand it back to you, and none too clean it is neither. Yeah, cheeky little stumpet. She lifted my handkerchief right out of my pocket. I've done no such thing. It dropped out. I ain't fibbing. Well! Come along, Lord. Come along. The King's justice takes a dim view of the thieves. Teacher and your mother. Rest in peace. Rest in peace. It's Prince Horace, father. Horace, what are you doing here? Why are you dressed like that? Shouldn't you be at your lessons? Look, father. New boots. Just like yours. They're very splendid. Wherever did you get them? You ordered them, father. From the rural bootmaker. Yes, yes, of course I did. <laughs> Can we go riding? Now? Please, can we? Not now, Horace. There's much to be done. This afternoon, then. Please? I'll have the Lord Chancellor put it on my agenda. Promise? Without fail. Four years in Wallback Prison. Next to you. Your first offence, I see. No, sir. I never stole nothing in my life. Confession is good for the soul, child. And I have been known to reduce sentence if only people will tell me the truth. But I didn't nick that hanky, sir. We have a sworn affidavit here from a most substantial citizen that says otherwise. Three years in Walbach Prison. Next, and quickly. So, Da Vinci's assumption was that if one could construct a winged apparatus that possessed the essential qualities of a bird, 
one could duplicate the phenomenon of flight. I have it, sir. Well, I'm not sure that Mr. Da Vinci would approve. But I suppose we should try it. Let it go. Scientists must be daring. Indeed it is. Here, look at that. Come on. Oh. Come on, my girl. I've got to get down there. Let go of me. Jimmy, go. what is it, lad? It's anyone. That's my sister down there. Hardly, lad. Those are prisoners, judged and sentenced, and on their way to Wilbur Prison. Jemmy, I think our first flight was a great success. Now, other designs of Mr. Da Vinci are much more elaborate. Keep buffing them, Walter, till they shine like fathers. A message from His Majesty, Your Highness. I'm sorry to inform you, but the press of events has obliged His Majesty to postpone your outing today. But he promised. He did, and His Majesty regrets, but he must ride with the ambassador to discuss the counter-proposal on boundaries. He promised. You are unheard. Who is responsible for this? How could this happen? It's been tampered. Goose grease. An insult to me and an affront to my royal master, King Philip. Your Excellency, once again, please accept our most humble apologies. King Philip did not send me to collect royal apologies, Your Majesty. Your Excellency. What I took to be the thoughtless conduct of an overly spirited boy seems to have a disturbing pattern. Your Excellency, I can assure you it is pure coincidence. That is of no consequence now. Diplomacy has failed. More drastic measures may be in order. I return to my country immediately. Here. Do you understand what you have done? You have endangered our entire kingdom. I thought I was raising a prince. Father. Silence. I am at my limit, Horace. There will be no whipping boy for you this time. You, yourself, will be severely punished. Punish me? Yes, you. You are willful. Spoiled and not fit to inherit this kingdom. Now go to your chambers. Clever of him to use his son like that to humiliate us. It defies all conventions of diplomacy. The poxy brat. Why did you bring that? Perhaps I can repair it. The horse is really good. What's happened? Why are we stopping? Do you smell something? And, and deliver! Highwayman! And a pleasant evening to you, fine gentlemen. Today is your good fortune. You have been detained by them two world-famous paladins of the open road. Hold your nose, Billy and Cutwater. I give you me congratulations. Now, if you would be so kind as to pass down some of that expensive-looking baggage, me good man. <sighs> Oh. 
Excuse me, sir. Do you know who I am? I think not. sister. If your sister's in Walbark prison, she's a murderer or a thief. She's neither one, and you run away with your own self. I command you not to leave me here alone. I command you not to leave me here alone. Do you smell something bad? <laughs> Oi, what are you doing? Got me another one, Mr. B! Yeah, <laughs> <I don't know. laughs> Let me go, I'll have you flogged! Hey, no. I'll give you a cough you'll never forget. Sparrows is all. Food for pigs. Let me go! You wasted No, enough. no, no, young sir. A true gentleman of the road is my friend Billy here, but a stickler for good manners! You don't be one of taking the wrong side of him! Oh, do you know he's Billy in Catwater? The very ones, young sir. Famed in song, verse, and the annals of criminality. Well, if nothing else, they got some fine victuals. Leave that alone, that's our lunch. Lordy, da, saddle on a fine beast, too. Bright plumage for sparrows. Mayhap we have ourselves a real prize here, Mr. B. What you'll have is your heads in a basket if you don't let us go. I'm the Crown Prince. And I'm the Grand Turnip of China. And we've topped a few ourselves, boy. You better think on being more polite. Polite to rogues, scoundrels and thieves. Oh, you forgot vicious murderers. But only in the line of duty. Excuse me. That there is the royal crest. I told you, didn't I? Oh, dear. Oh. Uh, we stole it. Yeah, but first you packed the pretty picnic basket, eh? We stole that too. I'm not a thief, I tell you. I'm Prince Horace, heir to the throne of Brattenburg. And if you know what's good for you, you'll bow down. A word, Mr. B. I... If you try to flee, it'll go hard on you. 
The lad's tiresome enough to be a prince. What sort of a ransom do you think? Weight in gold. Oh. Everyone agrees. That's the usual ransom. No more, no less. Ninety pounds. Oh, you're a good weight and measure man as ever there was, Mr. P. I count on your discernment. Ah! Ninety-three? Oh, you couldn't get a fairer verdict in church, says I. Mount up, lads! We got grand plans for you. We'll be dog rich, we will. <laughs> I'm not going in there. I'd have heard you let me go. Let you go? That's a not likely boy. The first requirement for seeking ransom, Mr. Reed, is a ransom note. And that would present a difficulty. Didn't we steal an inkwell once? Last night. What we took off them toffs. Paper. Pens, ink, wax. Well, the ones that had that painting of the lady in the horse. I like that. There's a more vexing problem, Mr. B. Who's going to do the scribblement? We can't write. Gentleman born though he is, Mr. B nor I never did have much in the way of an education. So, young sir, you'll write the ransom note. I don't take orders from villains and cutthroats. Now, think of your poor old dad. He'd be very much obliged to know you're safe and hearty. Now do us that document, or I'll shoot off a toe or two, and then your fingers, and then your ears, and then your nose! Oh, Mr. B, Mr. B, you're frightening the poor lad. Now I'm sure if we just talk to him real nice... No, I won't. Oh. He can't write! Oh, and crows don't call. Princes and the like are learning to write when they're tots. Now hop to it, boy. He's right. I can't so much as scratch my own name. Trying to pull a wall. Oh, give it to me! I'll write it. You? That's right. My whipping boy's a wizard with letters. Try him. What are you thinking, Mr. C? There's something amiss here. The whipping boy writes and the prince don't. I smelt it right off. They're trying to flummox us by taking each other's part. Hmm. Now, no more playing us for fools, you hear? Certain as eggs is eggs. You're the prince. Him? He's my servant, an ignorant street boy. Ignorant? He can write. My whipping boy ain't got the sense of a net. I'd be obliged if you sent him to the castle with the note. So I'd be shed of him. You witless gutter snipe, how dare you? He's an imposter. I'm the prince. Not a peep. There's business being done. Now, what we want is your royal highness's weight in gold. That's exactly 93 pounds. 93. Uh-oh. Eighty-seven, exactly. We sticks with the 93. <laughs> <laughs> now, make it known to the king that we're Desperate men. You'll take desperate measures if you don't get the ransom. <laughs> That's the spirit. Tell him we're dangerous men with reserved places in hell, you might say. <laughs> I refuse to be ransomed for a paltry 93 pounds in gold. My father will pay far more than that. You won't be ransom no ways. If we didn't have you see you to carry that message, I'd wear your head for a hat. Perhaps there's a better plan, Mr. You B. fool! 
Can't you see I've got their brains so muddled they want to turn you loose? I don't wish to go home. This isn't some kind of lock. If you stay here, they'll kill you. And send the horse. This is a disaster. Who knows what Cousin Philip's reaction will be? Nevertheless, your compromise was well received by his ambassador, Your Majesty. Lord Chancellor, the ambassador left here aggrieved and insulted. I don't think he will recommend any plan of mine to Philip. <clears throat> Forgive me, sire. What is it? We've searched the entire castle. There's not a sign of his royal highness. The prince didn't come to his lessons, Your Majesty. Is that so unusual? I'm sure you'll find him somewhere. There's also a horse missing from your royal stables, sire. And I'm afraid the whipping boy's gone too, sire. Yes, well, gentlemen, look again. Children often hide when they're sulking. I was a bit harsh with Prince Horace yesterday. I'm sure they'll turn up. Now, where were we, Chancellor? I don't know what move we should make next. Your obedient son, Prince Oris. Horace. Of Brettenberg. Here! Hey! Hey! Ah! 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 Here. What we took off one of them toffs. Oh. Ah, uh, seal gives it importance. <laughs> now you watch them boys. They're slippery. I'll treat them like they was me own. Till we're ready to feed them to the bears. <laughs> Dogrich! Dogrich! <laughs> How are we going to keep from picking our own pockets? <laughs> Too small. You stay if you want. When Captain Walker returns, you tell him or we'll have that chimney. You leave me here alone, you prince. What was you saying? Where's the prince? My whipping boy is over there. Where? Where is he? In the straw. Ah, you little blackguard! Come back here! It's only the whipping boy. I'm the prince. Hold, you treacherous brat! Ah! Punishment! I got the eyes of a hawk. Nobody gives old cup water the slip. Bear! A bear! 
for deserting me, whipping boy. Who cares? I'm on my way. But I haven't dismissed you from my service. I dismissed myself. Lost coming from or going to? Going to Walbeck Prison to save my sister, Annie Rose. She's innocent. <sighs> Ain't we all? Well, it's that way through the forest. Just follow the river. We couldn't find the river. You two are on the way to being hopeless. It's where it's always been. Through the trees there, just follow it. Thanks, miss. Hold on. Why ever were you hiding like that? We were chased by some villains and then a huge, ferocious, man eating bear. A and bear? A dancing bear? Well, he wasn't dancing when we saw him. He was over there, having a picnic. Oh, picnic. I'm much obliged to you. Petunia. I recognize the ink, the paper, and look, the royal seal of King Philip. I can't believe it. Sire, consider the language. Did not the ambassador warn us of desperate measures when he left us so abruptly? True enough. And he has a well-deserved reputation for using headstrong tactics. The conclusion is inescapable, Your Majesty. The ambassador has kidnapped your son. But why? Why would he ask for gold? To embarrass our sovereign, to make a mockery of our kingdom. He is using this as a provocation. He has already intimated that King Philip is bent on war. He made the poor boy write it himself. What are you talking about? Horace didn't write that. Of course he did, Mother. Here's his signature. Your son cannot write. Why didn't, why didn't you tell me? Your Majesty, with all due respect, I tried. Shall I marshal the army, sire? No. No, send out a patrol. Try to intercept the ambassador before he reaches the border. Let us hope Cousin Philip has no part in this and there may yet be peace. But above all, find my son. Lord. Mr. B. There. How come you ain't guarding them boys? They slipped away. Say what happened, but I'll pull your arms off. I'm here to tell. A huge creature, Mr. B. The most fearsome I'd ever seen. Like a bear, but much, much larger. More like a hippopotamus with fur it was. Cut water, you skinny lion scum. Look! Look! You got 
look like gold to you. More like trouble for the likes of us. Them boys boxed us good. And you're the one that let them run free. The only thing to do is to get them again. Aye. Only this time we'll know how to treat them. a banquet somewhere. Oh, I'm tired. And I'm tired of hearing you. Go home. Look out! Soldiers! Looking for us. Looking for you. They'll get me in the bargain. Ain't you had a snout full of this running away? Just come to them. I don't want to go home. I didn't know you could catch fish with your hands. Do anything if you have to. to know that you ain't got the sense of a flea. wasn't a very nice thing to say. What? That I'm stupid. I never said you were stupid. That's what you meant. And just because I don't know how to make a fire doesn't mean I'm stupid. Look, I was just trying to say that if you want warm clothes and a fish supper, you'd better give me a hand. I'm sorry if I hurt your feelings. It's OK. What kind of fish are these? The kind you eat. They're trout. Now help me clean them. Oh, never eat.
Why do you think your sister's in Walbark Prison? Not for doing no harm to no one, I can tell you. We told her right from wrong. Who did? Me and me mum. How come your mother doesn't get her out? Winter fever carried her away. Rest in peace. Mine was thrown by a horse. Rest in peace. Your father must be having a fit by now. I might as well be stuffed and hung on a wall like a stag's head for all he notices me. But you've got to go back. You're a prince. I might never go back. This is the best time I've ever had. Chess player. Who would have thought I'd miss him so much? I know. Can't you walk a little slower? Can't you walk a little faster? Some say this is a sin, but tell me how can that be true? Sir! Sir! Whoa! Who called? Whoa! Sir! Would you take a passenger, please? I need to get to Walbeck to save my sister. Up on up, lad. Saving sisters is a serious business. I'm heading to the market there myself with a load of guns. The divine potato, sir. Captain Nick's a speciality. These I've got in here are the finest in the world. <laughs> Fill the stomach faster than anything ever grown. Stop. And the skin protects you from the ague and the plague. Take me up, sir. Yeah? Will you stop? We left the friend beyond. Oh, well, why didn't you say we can't have that, can we? Whoa! Whoa! My friend? You lads, now there's two of you. Hop in the back. Can't hurt the potatoes, none. They're as tough as a sailor's jaw. Oh. But a gaggle is fine now and Quit your grinning at me. Drinking has been in this world forever and ever. Amen. Hello, love. Yes. ladies. Oh, what you in for, dearie? But not pinching a nose rag. Dinner! We get free food in here. Isn't that grand? <sighs> Come and get your slop. I ain't eating. So they admit I'm innocent. Come on. Yeah, Gypsy. Have you seen anyone like this on the road? What's they wanted for, sir? That's the prince. Can't you read? No, no, more's the pity. I never had the time. He reads a bit. Signs and omens, you know. Look out! Please, Your Worship, put away the firearm. I did see the prince now that you mention it. Where? In the royal carriage. Cuddled in his blessed mother's arms. Why is it you can never get sense out of a gypsy? Because you're up there, Your Worship. And we're down here. Witless fool. Whoa! Stand and deliver! 
wisdom, Hoy! And be quick about it. Remember, it's me they want, not you. Stand and deliver, I say. What? Potatoes. That's all I'm carrying. Would you like them with salt or pepper? We're looking for two runaway apprentices. Oh. Apprentice highwayman? Always something new in the world. Well, look what's here. The young whipping boy himself. <sighs> now, where is he? Where's your master, huh? I don't know. Oh, you don't know, huh? Ah, oh, man, I shake it out of your teeth. I don't know, and I wouldn't tell you if I did. Haro! Here's the potato we're after. Come here, me young sir. Come here. That's enough now. Land on me, boys. You'll deal with Captain Benedict Nip to the Queen's own. Oh. oh! Now, what did you write in that poxy letter, huh? I don't get your meaning. You don't, do you? Well, you'd better begin to. That wasn't gold coming out of your old fella's castle. It was soldiers! Soldiers! Which means no good for the likes of us. I don't have nothing. Nothing to say. I'm gonna lay a whipping on you you'll never forget. A word, Mr. B. Now, there's mayhap good reason the gentry don't whip their own. <laughs> they got reasons for everything they do, even though some are a mite peculiar. Aye. What do you think? Do what they do. Whip the whipping boy. Like the gentlemen that we are. The whipping boy. You won't fox us again, young sir. We know what's proper. <gasps> Why are you holding that boy upside down? Fits. Gets terrible fits if we don't rush the blood to his head. <laughs> Take him again, Mr. B. Have you seen the prince on this road? What's he look like? Like a prince, you fool. You mean with a crown and all? Witless fool. Ah! Lay on hard. Stop! Stop! Don't tell them a thing. I command you. You command. You're no better than us. Put a bit more sting into it, Mr. C. You didn't raise a peep out of it. And red and blue. Oh, crack me, coconuts. The blackguards. <laughs> Where'd they go? Betsy, is it you here, darling? Yes, it's me. And you can rest easy. Petunia ran them off good and proper. Oh. <laughs> a happy thing for them, they didn't have to contend with a captain of the Queen's own. I'd have paid them back ten for one. I've got here some herbs and unguents. Let me treat where they put those stripes on you. Sweet Betsy. Light of my eyes. Where you been? I looked for you at the fair at Grossport. I keep losing you, darling. So, 
Marry me, and you'll have potatoes every day for the rest of your life. Don't be daft. <laughs> Excuse me. I am grateful, but we've got to get a wall back right away. Is it straight down the road? Oh, bless you, boy. I will go in there. Just past the cathedral, boys. You can't miss it. Thanks. years of age, and she's innocent. Innocent? <laughs> Jimmy, let me see to it. Open up! What now? I command you to allow us to enter. I am your prince. Prince of ragamuffins. Clear out! I'm the missing Prince Horace, and I demand you to let us in. <laughs> my sister for good. It's my own fault. I know a way. Not likely. I do. I'll ask my father to pardon Annie Rose. A king can pardon anyone. You'd do that? But you'd have to go back to the castle. Royalty can't always do what it wishes. Come on. Come on. Might confuse his place with the royal treasury, but no credit. There's a good plan. We need some sleep. What is that for me? Nothing. <laughs> More in the nature of a loan betwixt gentlemen. <laughs> what, what, what would this loan be for, may I ask? Horses. Well, of course, of course. I can see it would be embarrassing in your profession not to have any. <laughs> it wouldn't be implied to ask, uh, what prospects do you have for repaying this loan? Not that I have any doubts, you understand? <laughs> but what are your prospects? Show him, Mr. B. We had the young prince here, twice in our hands. But he'd give us the slip. But we aims to get him again. This other lad here is his whipping boy. Aye, and we whipped him good, too, when the prince give us trouble. <laughs> <laughs> the flab to this boy? Aye, the whipping boy. It's the way them mucky mucks does it. Gentlemen, this is the prince he whipped. The other is a street boy from around these parts here. We flogged the wrong boy. And no greater offense there is in the kingdom. Now, if you wouldn't mind leaving, boys, I prefer to hang for something I done. We whipped the prince. Ah, Mr. B, that's a good one. We flogged the prince. <laughs> we flogged the prince. 
That little rat tells his father there's no place to hide. But a prince has always got to return to his castle. Now, if we could be there to lay our hands on them and wring their chicken necks, no one will ever know. <laughs> we do think alike, don't we? Ever since I got this shot in the smeller, I knew we'd make a fine pair. your business. Look closely at me, soldier. I'm Prince Horace, returned. That's me. It is you. Open the gates. 
Mr. Prince, open the gates. Open the gates. <laughs> General, prepare my horse. I ride with the advance guard. We depart within the hour. Falkenhurst, I want an emissary sent to King Philip immediately. Tell him I expect my son to be turned over to me at the border. Otherwise, I will invade. I want no excuses, no delays. Horace. Hello, father. What have they done to you? I'll have their heads for this! Prepare for war! Without delay, Your Majesty! Show no mercy to these kidnappers! But I wasn't kidnapped! I ran away! You ran away? I thought you wouldn't notice that I was gone. But why? How could you possibly think that? I think I should know the answer to that question. But you've come home now. That's all that matters. Father! No, no. I think I should send the soldiers home now. What do you think? I'm sorry, Father. For all the trouble I've caused. No. No. I'm sorry. Because, you see, I'd forgotten what it's like to be 12 years old and the son of a king. With this treaty, our border dispute is resolved. Ah. Cousin Philip has agreed that it would be shameful for us to destroy what our fathers took so long to create, a point that seemed to have been lost on his ambassador. And now, bring me the young rogue who stole away our son in the middle of the night. But, Your Majesty, I never... And brought him back a better son. <laughs> to a better father. <clears throat> Nevertheless, bring me the whipping boy. Father, he's my friend. And the best friend you've ever had. So there'll be no more whipping boys. But what about my sister? I'm coming to that. As a result of the obvious injustice she has suffered, Annie Rose shall be given a full pardon. No. No? What is this child? I don't want no pardon. I am innocent. And nothing less. <laughs> Very well. I declare you innocent. I accept your majesty. Unusual child. I now proclaim you both members of the royal household. Show them to their chambers, Horace. Jeans. Come on, Annie Rose. Proper lodgings. <laughs>